I get to work, Vinny. Wake up over there. A and E biography. Brett Hitman Hart. We open with off the top. This is the best of these by miles and miles and miles and miles. By miles, miles and miles. Yes, I thought the yes. Shawn Michaels one was really good. This was really really good. This is better. I did like the Steve Austin one as well. The the actually Shawn Michaels one was good. But this is better than Shawn. But the the there is zero. I believe zero BS in this one. Well, that's because uh, old Brett he can't help himself. No, he mm-hmm. he can he cannot help but just be honest. Sometimes to his own detriment. It is what made him Brett the Hitman Hart. It's what made Brett Hart so successful. And in some ways, it really, really hurt him. Is that he wanted? He's honest and real about everything all the time. Now, to be fair, everybody, we did not watch the Mick Foley. It's the only one we didn't watch. And I heard that one <clears throat> was very good as well. So who knows? Maybe we'll watch that one. We'll see. So we have our opening video. We have Drew McIntyre and Edge and Undertaker and Vince talking about what a great champion Bret Hart was. Uh, you know, teaser for the whole show. They mentioned Owen briefly, and then Jim Ross from the get-go lets you know, this is not a sad story. Bret Hart came out with his pride intact. In case you were thinking about turning it off at some point, they want you to know it does have a happy ending. So this show was a masterpiece of pacing because they crammed in a ton of stuff in two hours. It never felt rushed, and nothing felt left out. So, <laughs> Brett wins the title at SummerSlam in August. And then Vince has to go to him and say, I can't honor your contract. <laughs> mm. And you watch this and think, this is the worst planning. It's not just that you signed the guy to a lifetime contract less than a year ago, or barely a year ago. But you put the title on him in August, and then they get so convoluted you have to screw him out of the title three months later? Well, he didn't have to screw him out well, of the I mean, title. Well, I mean, he thinks he had to. I don't even know if he does or not. I don't even know what this guy believes anymore. That's fair. I, I feel like he's he's just, uh, I don't know. I can understand. I'm sure that there was a, here's the deal. The crux of the issue is, the story that they tell is that Vince thought that Brett was going to go to Nitro the next day. Okay? Legally, he couldn't. All right? And not only not only can I just say that, but like, after he got screwed... Why didn't he go there the next day? He still waited. Because legally, he couldn't go there the next day. And and Vince was involved in lawsuits based on these contracts. So it's not like he didn't know. So I think that he was just so fucking paranoid that maybe he convinced himself at the time, or I don't even know. But, like, this is a story where when they interview Vince for these documentaries... He's much better than I expected since I watch Raw every week. I expect just, like, some guy that doesn't know what's going on. But, like, he can remember all this stuff, and he largely, except in this case, tells, you know, the story that we've known forever. So I don't know. It's like when I hear Hulk Hogan tell stories. It's like, does this guy believe his own bullshit? Or has he just been, like, a worker for so long that he can't help but lie? Because every now and then Hogan will tell some story that's not total bullshit. So I think there maybe is a real person in there. But like with Vince, I just don't know what the fuck's up with this guy. Does he believe this shit? He tells everyone else's story. They believe the shit because they heard it from Vince. But does Vince actually believe this? I don't know. So, uh, Brett explains that he, he tells, and the timeline gets a little convoluted here because I think this conversation actually happened like months prior. But Brett goes to Sean, says, I don't mind dropping the title to you. And Sean tells him, I wouldn't do the same thing for you. So now Brett's pissed off. He won't drop the title of this. Bro, none of this would ever happen if this guy wouldn't have said that. I know. <laughs> because, but the problem, Brian, he was, and I quote, absolutely 100% full-on prick. So, and and even Brett says, I'd drop the title of Steve Austin. I'd drop the title of Steve Lombardi. I'm not dropping it to Sean. So we get to Survivor Series. It's the day of the show. And Brett happens to be mic'd up for wrestling the shadows. They show clips. Well, that clip of Brett's mic'd up conversation with Vince that Vince did not know he was being recorded. Then Brett's conversation with Julie after, afterwards, which she's suspicious. She thinks something's up. He says, everything's fine. I was going to do a DQ. They don't do a DQ, everyone. Uh, Brett loses. He, as it turns out, submits to the sharpshooter. Never saw that coming. And afterwards, Vince wants to talk to him. Or he, he sees Vince. And he says, Vince, I'm going to go take a shower. If you're still here when I get, when I get out, I'm going to knock you out. He goes to take a shower. He comes back, and there's Vince. Earlier in the show, Bret Hart 
uh, criticize his own promo ability. So it's not what I do best. This promo about giving 15, 14 years of his life, all the birthdays he missed, all the Christmases he missed, every bump he took, every plane ride, every car ride, all of it, 14 years of sacrifice, and this is how he is treated, and he's going to put all 14 years into this one punch, and it's the best punch I ever threw. That's the best promo of Brett's life right there. <laughs> Dagan here says, I think Vince is so senile, he just believes everything he says. Here's a problem, though. The story that Vince has told ever since Montreal was that he gave Brett a free shot. Yes. Because he had to be Mr. Tough Guy. Mm -hmm. And he always told that story, I let him punch me, blah, blah, blah. Well, here we are in 2021. And by the way, the story is, uh, well, anyway. So he goes in there and he just flat out admits, yep, he just uh, walked in and knocked the shit out of me. Didn't even bring up the free <laughs> shot line, nothing like that. He just, he told the story the way that everybody had heard. Well, I shouldn't say everybody. Vince told a different story, but he told what I believe was the legitimate story. He did not give this guy a free shot. Brett just walked in and knocked him out after telling him, if you're in there, I'm going to knock you out. So Vince was honest about that as well. And to Vince's credit, he, he reminded everybody, I could have left the show at any time. But he actually stayed around to try to have a conversation with Brett afterwards. I mean, if you can give him any credit. I'm sure there was a modicum of guilt that he felt. Absolutely. So Brett explains here, and this is recent, Brett. He he respected everyone, or he treated people with respect. He wanted them to treat him with respect. They did not. He would not change a thing about how he behaved. He resents being told he overreacted. He explains, this. I'm not just some guy who got into wrestling. Wrestling was my whole life. He tries to move on. But it's WCW. He says, I wanted to succeed in WCW. I wanted to shove it down Vince's throat. But they were so stupid. They didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> that was my favorite line. Yeah. And then it is May 23rd, 1999. And Brett's on a plane to LA. He gets a dark thought, a dark feeling. Something terrible has happened. And he gets a voicemail from a friend in the World Wrestling Federation letting him know there was an accident during his show. And Owen Hart has perished. They have the full announcement to the audience at home from Jim Ross, letting them know what has happened, which I have not seen, not the whole thing, since that day. It sucks. Very hard to watch, to sit through. Alice and Hart, who is Brett's sister, one of them, and uh, the, the, the Hart sibling, who is most commonly shown in this, talking about the family. Uh, Alice explains, we will never get over Owen. We will never stop missing him. We will never stop thinking about him. We will never stop grieving. Stu and Helen never recovered. Helen passed away a few years later. Stu was alone. He dies a few years after that. Brett was in the room when he passed. And this this was as, as, this, this, this was as heavy as it sounds. Mm -hmm. We blow through the years 1999 and 2004, which were a lot of bad years for Brett. Well, he blow through it, but he makes it abundantly clear that he felt that uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, Goldberg was a zero. Yes, yep. he said that. Oh, he's, he's never changed his mind about that. So Goldberg kicks him in the head, ends his career. Then he has a stroke. He's in a wheelchair for three months. They show lots of physical therapy. They had, they did, had to do to recover, had to walk again, had to learn how to walk again. You know, I don't want to. Uh, I'm certainly not defending Goldberg from kicking uh, Bret Hart in the head. Sure but uh, the thing with the kick is when you watch it, like he gets him. But I've seen people kick people far harder in the head than Goldberg kicked Bret Hart. And the fact of the matter is. It wasn't even so much that kick from Goldberg. That kick gave him a concussion. Mm -hmm. The problem is he then went and toured with WCW where he was feuding with Terry Funk and they were doing these matches where they were hitting each other with shit. And so Brett's concussed and he's getting hit in the head over and over and over again. And that series of concussions is ultimately what ended his career. So... If this had been today, I'm not saying that Brett would not have retired, because maybe he would have, but if if he would have gotten that first concussion from Goldberg and they would have sat him out until he could be cleared, it's very possible that he would not have had the problems that he had as a result of what he actually did, which was go out there and continue wrestling on a concussion. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.